Welcome to Mastering and Guideline in Ultrasound and Echo. Hi everyone. Uh, before I go uh, to the topic, I want to mention that uh, there are especially these three uh, clips are related uh, to this uh, one. So I strongly recommend go check uh, those clips too. Now let's do it. Aorta divided to five uh, part or section. Aortic uh, root that has uh, aortic valve. Ascending aorta is start from the pseudotubular junction, means connection of the aortic root to the aorta up to the first uh, branches uh, of the uh, aorta, illuminate or brachiocephalic. And then from there we have to the up to the last branches, the third branches is left subclavian, beginning of the innominate to the end of the uh, branches of the subclavian, we call it aortic arc. From there to the diaphragm, we have descending thoracic aorta, and uh, below the diaphragm, we have abdominal aorta. The uh, size, the normal uh, size of the, each segment has been shown here based on the European Journal of Echocardiography. You can see it, but the most accurate uh, is that we have to uh, take uh, in account the gender of the patient and the size of the body. So most accurate will be uh, the size of the body mass index, the, uh, the normal uh, size of each segment. Generally, for average people, any abdo uh, aortic root uh, above 4.5 is uh, at the aortic root, um, I mean in sinus valsalva is abnormal. Ascending aorta over uh, 3.5 uh, is abnormal. Root, this uh, aortic uh, arc, the same and thoracic descending and proximal abdominal if it's above uh, three centimeter will be abnormal now because the importance of the aortic size especially the most important risk factor for the aortic dissection and rupture is aortic size uh, the measurement of the aorta at different level is very critical and important uh, in uh, evaluation of the patient. Now let's see how we measure, uh, how we get those view for measuring each uh, spot. As you know, in a classic uh, transthoracic echo protocol in the plaques, our sector passed through the aortic roots and beginning of the ascending aorta, as you can see on this uh, this one. And we cannot see ascending aorta in the plaques view. And as I mentioned in the aortic regurgitation part one clip, uh, in the aortic route, we have four uh, diameters that we usually only we measure in uh, normal situation. We just measure uh, sinus valsalva diameter and the other three uh, diameter including sinotubular junction or sinotubular junction, surgical ring and echocardiographic ring, we measure those other three parameters when we need intervention of the aortic valve, for example replacement uh, or TAVR or surgery, then we do measure other uh, three. And uh, the technique for measurement uh, on the especially sinus valsalva and sinotubular junction and ascending aorta is a little different among the researchers. Some research, they uh, prefer measure outer to outer, some inner to inner, and some outer to inner or leading edge to leading edge. Uh, and the timing of the measurement, again, amongst uh, many of them is different. Uh, some uh, researchers uh, prefer measure 
uh, at the end diastole and some at the end systole and some of them at both end diastole and end systole. But based on the American Society of Echocardiography and uh, Cardiology College, uh, those two society and European, the last version recommendation was that we measure at the level of sinus valsalfa, sinotubular junction and ascending at the end diastole and leading edge to leading edge. Uh, that means outer to inner. Outer to inner, we measure those uh, diameter, but the surgical ring and echocardiographic ring or annulus uh, will be measured inner to inner. You can check that clip I explained exactly how. Just the only I want to give you a tip on the sinus of Barsalva when you measure it, go see the loop back and forth and make sure you where is your aortic wall at the level of the sinus, you can follow it. And then uh, when you show where is the aortic wall, put out there to not the uh, here as you can see we have three layers. One at the RVOT, in here is RVOT, here is the uh, connective tissue between the RVOT and here uh, aortic wall. So you find the, with the sinus loop, uh, you can see very easy at that level. Uh, it's better you do on the zoom mode, magnify it, and in the osteolic, you go measure out there to inner and the same as a sinotubular junction and ascending. But as I mentioned again, ascending uh, will not see in the plaques, a uh, classic plaques view. For ascending aorta that I recommend uh, do uh, get this image uh, for ascending aorta in all patients. Doesn't matter there is any, any indication or not. Uh, for example, hypertension, uh, those people with history, especially in the family with aneurysm or uh, dead due to the uh, uh, rupture or aneurysm or dissection, we have to, uh, better we have to get in all patients uh, one ascending aorta uh, view. For that purpose, as you can see, we, our sector should pass through this line. So, very easy. We have two techniques to get ascending or one of them is that just slide a little uh, medial here, probe the medial a little, all uh, healing as a rock and roll healing and make our sector pass through and a little twist uh, clockwise. So our sector pass through this uh, ascending aorta. Any time we can get it with this maneuver, but most of the time it uh, will not be successful. In those cases, the easy way is that we move our transducer one intercostal higher and twist clockwise, something between uh, 11 and 12 o'clock, depending on the body habitus of the patient, sometimes more if his patient is, for example, has big belly and a short height. So you have to twist more. If the patient is skinny and tall, twist less. Just you have to go a little intercostal higher and twist it, fanning left and right slowly. Suddenly you can open uh, ascending aorta as you can see here. In that case, we are not focusing anymore on the aortic root. We just we go uh, focusing on the ascending aorta with fanning left when you find it, the ascending aorta with twisting try to open as much as possible uh, distal of the ascending aorta and with fanning left to right find uh, see where is the largest uh, size of the ascending aorta then you have to freeze it and go back and forth, find the border, and then at the final, at the end of the hostel, measure uh, the size, the largest spot of the ascending aorta, out there to inner, your measurement will be uh, ascending aorta diameter. 
in those cases that ascending aorta is uh, dilated or especially when you have uh, enlargement of the uh, sinus of valsalva try always do on the p-zax or short axis of the aorta level measure three dimension those dimension will be from the each sinus to the uh, commissure of the uh, aortic valve so we have three uh, dimension we have to measure at the annulus uh, here at the diastole when mercedes benz signs or uh, closing aortic valve at the uh, right coronary cusp out there to the commissure between the left and non coronary cusp and out there at the uh, out, uh, uh, non coronary cusp out there to inner of the uh, commissure and the last one you measure the coronary sinus left coronary sinus out there to inner of the commissure and if you see uh, some extra dimension uh, between it looks like enlargement between those uh, two uh, sinus measure those peak to peak or uh, higher uh, outer uh, outer of the sinus wall sulfur to the outer of the sinus wall sulfur the other one if it looks like lo uh, bigger than the those uh, sinus wall sulfur to the commissure those measurements especially try to uh, get it when you see if any of those uh, signs where sulfur is enlargement and irregular and they are not symmetric especially focus on this view if you cannot find the correct view on that piece x you can use explain on with the 3d probe explain exactly put that this spot and you can find the best uh, spot for your measure Sometimes, uh, some cases, uh, we cannot be even with uh, all those maneuver on the left parasternal, we cannot uh, see ascending aorta. In those cases, we can use right parasternal window for uh, getting view ascending aorta. For that purpose, we have to turn the patient to the right, uh, his or her right and right arm up and then we put probe exactly between the second or third dependent even sometimes first uh, intercostal right intercostal uh, uh, and then holding the marker between 12 to 12 theory and fanning or pointing to the left scapula uh, so marker 12 to 12 theory next to the sternum intercostal second or third intercostal fanning to the left scapula or left uh, left shoulder of the patient and uh, uh, if we fan it left and right suddenly you can see a good uh, image at least for the ascending aorta you will not maybe see the other structure maybe you see like uh, this uh, case you can see some part of the uh, left ventricle here we have left atrium those uh, left uh, upper and lower pulmonary vein a little at the here right pulmonary artery and some part of the main that it looks like here you can see and the most important structure you can see ascending aorta sometimes you maybe you can see at this level uh, right auricle or appendage and don't be confused with the uh, peri uh, pericardial effusion and we have finally maybe you can see part of the RVOT but the most important we all just want to focus and find the ascending aorta when you see part of the ascending aorta just with twisting clockwise or counterclockwise and fanning left and right you can open almost all ascending aorta up to the first uh, branches in that case uh, you can measure again the same way and the ostolic out there to inner the largest spot that you can see for distal of the the distal part of the ascending aorta and aortic 
arc and part, at the beginning of the thoracic descending, uh, suprastinal notch will be our window. For that purpose, we have to uh, pay, put patient uh, supine, and if is if is needed, especially when the patient has short uh, neck, we put uh, some uh, folded towel or small pillow on between the shoulder, and uh, as the patient extends head, uh, or maybe a little straight face straight or turn on the a little left side, then we hold our probe uh, over the put over the sternal notch sternal notch pointer of the marker toward between 12 and 1 o'clock usually 12 30 or between 12 and uh, 1 o'clock you have to just maneuver when you put it and fanning or pointing tip of the probe uh, toward the uh, foot of the patient in that way usually your handle of the probe is contact to the job of the patient you mean you have to completely fan uh, or pointing tip of the probe toward the foot completely in that case when you see uh, usually you see those all structures especially if the patient doesn't have COPD or is not a smoker you can see those uh, uh, feature and uh, uh, vessel including aortic arc ascending and then those three branches uh, you can see sometime uh, or most of the time you can see left uh, brachiocephalic uh, vein at the uh, before the first branches you can see here maybe oval or a little even dependent uh, orientation of your probe or a little more longer or oval shape or circular shape that will be your uh, left brachiocephalic those uh, landmark are very easy uh, and then you can find it in those patients that has very good window even we can see all ascending aorta with a little fanning and pointing to the right hip of the patient you can open uh, kill and see clear all ascending aorta too in this view in some cases not all cases because uh, usually old people is very hard but in those patients that doesn't have lung issue emphysema or COPD or not smoker or not on uh, ventilator or CPAP uh, with that maneuver a little fanning to the right of the uh, or pointing to the right hip you can see all ascending aorta and the first uh, those branches getting the other uh, part of the aortic arc and thoracic descending you maybe you have to find a little to the left of patient uh, and twist it less or more counterclockwise clockwise until you open completely aortic arc and thoracic descending just remember that this part uh, you cannot see with one view all of this in one view usually you have to twist or little uh, fanning a little different for each spot especially between aortic arc and thoracic descending uh, they are not at the same level in many cases so you have to be flexible to catch it at those parts here we have uh, you can see uh, in this patient has very uh, suprasternal notch window so even you can see all the ascending and even part of the aortic uh, valve here just for opening uh, the descending of the the descending part of the aortic arc and the beginning of the thoracic descending you have to a little heel toe toward the more towing more accurate towing and twisting a little clockwise or counterclockwise and open the distal part of the aortic arc then in the, the same manner you can measure uh, each part uh, clearly here at the end of the ascending uh, aorta 
at the mid, you have to measure between those two branches uh, here and measure outer to inner the same manner in the osteolic outer to inner or leading edge to leading edge. Finally, uh, with opening and making maximum uh, view of the uh, thoracic descending, right after the left subclavian, you measure this, you can measure this part too, especially when you see enlargement on the any spot of the aortic uh, ascending arc and all those stuff. Try to measure all those uh, three spots: distal, uh, mid, distal aortic uh, arc, and the beginning of the thoracic descending. Here you can see the uh, way the sector passes the aortic arch here you can see on the color this is cross section you just I just remind you here we have uh, those three branches uh, left uh, brachiocephalic vein uh, aortic arch left atrium here we have right pulmonary artery here we have superior posterior aortic recess here sometimes you can see open here this one sinus transverse between the pulmonary and uh, left edge. For uh, getting view of the uh, descending thoracic aorta, uh, we use apical two chamber view. You can see here our sector on the apical two pass through this uh, plane and next to the thoracic descending aorta, as you can see here. So for uh, getting uh, thoracic descending aorta, we just need it after getting apical 2. Sometimes even in apical 2, you can see some part of the thoracic descending posterior to the LA. But most of the time, for getting completely thoracic descending aorta, you have to uh, fan from apical 2, fan to the left side of the patient mean tip of the probe toward the left of patient or your right side if we, we sm slowly fanning suddenly you can see clear thoracic descending aorta because it give you a left ventricular and left atrium it give you good window to catch it the thoracic descending aorta when you see this one slowly we twisting Depending on the where exactly your uh, probe is compared to the left um, ventricular apex, just with twisting a little clockwise or contact clockwise, you can open all the way uh, thoracic descending aorta and then you can measure uh, thoracic descending, especially when you see uh, any. Uh, normal size in other part of the aorta and you are suspicious here so you want to evaluate thoracic descending this view actually is good for those cases like that they have intraortic balloon or uh, suspicious dissection all goes there to the evaluation for dissection if it's dependent to the thoracic descending or not this will help a lot and in most cases you can uh, get it uh, this view very easy. In uh, for the more uh, distal of the thoracic descending, you can use it uh, subcostal uh, window for that purpose. Uh, like the the same as we do on the IVC, uh, getting IVC that I explain in another uh, lecture. You have to put your curves uh, uh, probe the sub xiphoid marker between 12 to 12 30 usually 12 30 is more uh, successful and pointing to the uh, between the shoulder of the patient so from the ivc pointing up a little fan into the left of the patient with twisting uh, clockwise between 12 30 sometimes a little more 12 one o'clock depending on the body habitus and orientation of the aorta on the patient you can see easily 
thoracic descending uh, distal part right before enter to the abdomen and about the diaphragm. So you can see here very easy and you can measure uh, the distal part if you need it. When you have any abnormal size in the any part of the uh, thoracic aorta uh, ascending arc or descending, you have to uh, do uh, one image for the at least proximal of the abdominal aorta. For that purpose, we have to two uh, option. First, uh, for 2D measurement, you have to make your view as much as possible uh, horizontal, mean perpendicular to the sound view. For that purpose, the same technique that I explained in the IVC, you find the put your probe on the subdiphoid at marker uh, one o uh, 12 o'clock and then uh, pointing a little perpendicular to the belly and ask the patient if the patient can breathe in and then fan to the right and left and based on the finding which vessel and you do maneuver opposite way and if you see IVC you find the right of the patient I aorta show up with optimizing image depth for example here you have a decreased depth here too much depth and then uh, you measure on the abdomen for vascular uh, uh, community they recommend out there to out there if for echo uh, use it out there to inner dependent uh, which one you want to represent then uh, you measure it at the largest diameter that you can find it uh, it will be your measurement to just I am going to here mention that for Doppler of the pulmon uh, aorta you have to make it as much as possible the direction of the blood flow almost parallel as much as possible parallel to the sound beam that you can get correct Doppler so in that part for that purpose you have to with a rocking maneuver or hill to make it more uh, uh, oblique or as much as possible oblique or even vertical with just rocking maneuver then you can do Doppler for ab uh, abdominal aorta and vascular and all those uh, branches Doppler I'm going to prepare a lecture for vascular uh, tech uh, in, uh, a lecture in detail including all those branches, uh, celiac, SMA, uh, inferior mesenteric, uh, kidney, renal, uh, artery, all those stuff in another lecture playing in detail. We are done in this lecture. If you like it, forget share it. Uh, up to the next time. Have a wonderful time.